Jeremy had dropped the cash. Yeah, it was over a hundred thousand francs. It's the call to prayer. Good job, Laura. One new thing. Which new thing sounds fun to you? You can truly carry anything on your head. At about 3 a.m., we arrived at our next destination, which is in the heart of Africa, the little country of Rwanda. This is our first morning in Rwanda, and Jeremy handed Isaac the camera and said, hey, you know, film whatever is new. And Isaac and I are both like, um, everything's new. Grateful. We made a homeschool connection online with a family here before we arrived and they are doing a basketball league that our kids were able to sign up for. So we've got Isaac and Caleb and Laura and it's our first morning in Rwanda and they have a basketball game in two minutes ago. We're doing our best. How do they balance it on their heads? Do they have like a special like hat that covers their head to help them balance? I think they do. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, they carry a ton of stuff on their heads. All right, here's where they're playing basketball. Laura is so brave, she doesn't know anyone. We just got here, she didn't sleep last night because we were on the plane so much. And now she's being thrown right in, she's starting on her first game. And already making she friends. She hasn't played <laughs> basketball before. <laughs> Good job, Laura. What'd you think of playing basketball? Loved it, and I got the game-winning shot. I saw that you started making a bunch of shots. Yep. You were really a leader on the team, good job. That was the best. Yeah, the kids were playing basketball, and we got to meet a bunch of parents. And we got lots of local recommendations and... And advice, really like on cleaning the produce and all of that. She woke up at 10.30. Janae, you just woke up. She just finished breakfast. I'm glad we didn't wake you up to come to the basketball stuff. Mom. How was your time? It was fun. Mom. You I had just chill. Quiet. All right, after basketball, we are eating lunch. Valerie is the caretaker of the house, and she also cooks some meals, and she made us lunch today. We had no idea what to expect. We had no idea. So this is just amazing. So Kigali is the largest city in Rwanda, but it's made up of a whole bunch of different neighborhoods. And today we are coming on a tour of Nyamarambo, which is one of the neighborhoods here in Kigali. And they have an amazing women's center organization here that empowers women in the community. And they offer tours so that we can get some insight into the history of their neighborhood and learn more about what life is like here. One of the things they do here at the Women's Center is they have sewing classes. So they teach women in the neighborhood how to sew and then they sell the things that they make. They also do basket weaving, they have literacy classes and English classes. So they're making these things right here. Share with you a brief introduction about the Women's Center. We're going to learn how to speak some of the language. Murajo. Murajo. Which means hello. And then you reply Murajo, you reply Yego. Yego. Yeah. 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 that Sikra. Wow. Very cool. Hand embroidered. So they said it takes a full day to do one of these hand embroidered animals. So I had a conversation. I said, Mora. Vite? Ne, ne mesa. Janae is practicing having conversations in Kinyarwanda. It's really sweet. So this is a sewing class here at the Women's Center. This is the hairdressing center. Lizzie's getting a braid too. Uh, Diego. They are so fast at this. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> How do we say thank you? 
Thank you. <laughs> this is the milk bar. Uh, this is the milk bar. One of the milk bars available in this neighborhood. So here's all of the taxi motorcycles. So our guide explained that for her hair to get braided took six to eight hours and it cost about $15. But then she would leave it in for several months. And so it's fun to be able to just have a tour where we can ask questions about things we really know nothing about. Soon I want Elise to give me a bunch of braids. So this is one of the mosques here. Oh, about 14% of the population here in Rwanda are Muslim and the other 85-86% are Christian. Kendra decided to get a kilo of sweet potatoes. I think that'll go really nice with our pork roast tonight. And Nice. Oh, can I have one? I want another one. Morajo. Oh, how do we say what's your name? Um, Okay, Aria. Aria? Beautiful. Aria. Aria. Bye. Bye. This is translated to mean kindness. So this is a car-free zone, and so they've got lots of artwork, and they painted a football field on the ground so the kids can play. She said that after school there's lots of kids running around. What does this one say? means a child is a king. So they really tried to make this a fun place for kids, a safe place. So this is a car-free zone, so you can walk around, and it's all the restaurants are here. It's so beautiful, and you can really feel the sense of community as everybody's gathering in and out of restaurants. We're also in the place where a lot of the Muslims live, and so this area doesn't advertise or allow alcohol within the restaurant areas. Today is saying marajo to everyone. <laughs> Janae is loving knowing the Kenya Rwandan word for hello, which is marajo, and she's saying marajo to everyone that we come across, and she's loving it. Marajo. <laughs> the green of this city is so beautiful. Marajo. 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 It's the call to prayer. At noon. Yep. You guys know that I love libraries, so the library space here at the Women's Center is one of my favorite projects I see them doing. Um, they've got books available in Kinyarwandan, French, and in English. And public school here in Rwanda has two different sessions each day. There's a morning session or an afternoon session. You don't go to both. And so this space is open for kids to come and study and check out books and just have a safe, comfortable place to be when they're not in school. What did you learn from the walking tour? It, it seems a lot like they spend a lot of their lives just in this city. And I've been so used to moving around a ton. I thought it was really cool how they had some parts of their roads blocked off for either restaurant areas or parts where kids could play. She's teaching us. Oh, the balance. They would walk around. That is so impressive to us. For the back. That's it. That's it. <laughs> oh, but I cannot walk. Ooh, it's wobbling. Ooh, it's good. I wonder if more weight would make it easier or I harder. Yeah. I feel like I'm Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Elise is showing us all up. Wow. 
<laughs> yeah. One of the founding members of the group is also the cook for the group, and she does cooking classes and then prepares lunch for after the tour. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, she's the one who prepared all of this. Uh, because of the roots. Oh. These are sweet potatoes. These are potatoes. Here we have rice. Um, green bananas. Always a good plan. Right, <laughs> okay. Would you like some potatoes? You like potatoes? So I want you to try one new thing. Which new thing sounds fun to you? This is green vegetables. It looks like this. <laughs> This is other vegetables. Yeah. This one's the yum? I think it's the And then this thing is called a cassava root. And I want you to try it. No, you're just gonna I'm just putting it on your plate so you can take one bite to try it. How's the food? Good. This reminds me of rice and beans. I'm really proud of the kids. They're all trying lots of different things. This was everybody's favorite in our family. It's cabbage and peas. It was amazing. Yeah, the plantain food was really good. That's fun. There's a university program that has a group coming through that also was doing the tours and learning about Rwanda. So it's been fun to meet them and interact with other people who are traveling here in Rwanda. So what are you wanting to get? Everything. <laughs> so after lunch, after the tour, we're in the shop picking up some items to support the organization. All right, the girls found matching African dresses. Can we wear them at church? Yeah, you can wear them to church. We actually went to church yesterday here. It was so much fun. It was loud. Yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of singing. Caleb was into it. You loved our church experience here. Yeah. <laughs> The teddy bear. This is sick. Look at this stuff. Yeah, that is cool. How do they do that? Janae, your hat is adorable. Laura, did you get a little head thing? It is exactly the same. <laughs> Do you see the countdowns on the lights? It makes so much sense. So the red lights are arrows and they count down. And so then you know exactly how long you have. So one of the things that we've learned from locals here is the speed limit is strictly enforced with cameras and it never goes above 60 here in Kigali, which is really slow. 60 kilometers kilometers per hour. And so I've just constantly been watching, like, afraid to go over 55. Because you don't want to get close to 61. Ooh, way too close. All right. So this is where we live. Here. Just above 50. If you know Jeremy, he is a fantastic driver. But I'd say the one thing that maybe doesn't come as naturally to him is driving slow. Well, under the speed limit is completely against it's a foreign concept. any Americans. This is a very foreign concept. Yeah. I will say, on my first day in Rwanda, I have learned you can truly carry anything on your head. Like just in this first day, what have you seen? I've seen fruit. Tables. Trees. Tables. I saw like a giant pack of recycling. That guy's carrying a tire. Yeah. I'm so impressed. Literally, I do not have that skill set. Well, we got all unpacked but I can definitely say that more than one of us is feeling a very short and interrupted night's sleep last night. I am so tired and these bags under my eyes are giant. We're gonna have to go to bed early tonight and sleep long. So each of these motorcycles is a taxi and you just ride on the back. So these are students coming home or people coming home from work and they just ride on the back of the motorcycle. Super cool and convenient, but challenging as a family of seven. They take security very seriously here in Rwanda. We were coming into a parking lot and we had two guards check the car. So we pulled up and when we enter a parking garage, we're used to just pressing a button and getting a ticket. But there were two guards there and they spoke with us first and then they opened up the back seats of our car, which we didn't know they were going to do. So I turned around to watch them in the back seat 
And I turned around and another guard had stuck his head in the window and was opening up the glove compartment. I was like, oh! It just surprised you. It just completely surprised me. Then they opened up the trunk. I don't know what they were looking for, but I'm kind of glad we can prepare the kids for next time because... Yeah, then we went through metal detectors here in the parking garage. Yes. And we're just coming to try to buy basketballs. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we're in a mall. Yep. Well, we're looking for basketballs, but we happened upon... A store. A store. Coloring books. A whiteboard. I miss my whiteboards at home so <laughs> much. I just don't have any idea how much this means. Probably $15. We, we don't know. And we need money if they don't take card. These are books we like. All right, good news. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. We're in the right store. This is the 2000, two okay. 2000, and they have basketballs. They do. Here, this Somewhere is like right a big this Walmart. Is, there's a lot of options. All right, we found the basketballs. So we're finding things that we need here, but it's hard to find a price on all of them. Like this has a taped on. That one is, well, we think $55. All right, so $1 is about 1,200 Rwanda francs. We got a fan, because there's no AC where we're at. We got our shampoo and conditioner stuff, the basketballs. This was a toy for Janae. So we found different colored plastic glasses, which is so nice, because then we don't have to wash mm -hmm. the glass cups a million times a day, because we know whose is whose, and we don't have to worry about them breaking. That's the biggest thing. So one of the cool things here is that single-use plastic bags are illegal. We're ready. We've yep. got our bags. When you check out, you have to show your receipt to get out of the store. And we've dealt with that in Puerto Rico for the last four or five years. So Kendra's wanting to find a loose, lighter dress that will be cooler while we're here. So bright and colorful. Yeah. Basically, I'm loving all the dresses I see. Yeah. There are a lot of dresses to choose from here. So one thing that is different here that we have to get used to is the bartering that happens here. I have been looking for an SD card for my camera, and I went into one store and they had it, and they said the price initially was 36,000 francs. And then when I was getting ready to pay, they said it was 46,000 francs. And so I just walked out and said I wasn't interested but then I found the SD card at another place and they quoted a price and we negotiated and so it's just different. There isn't just a set price, it's a negotiated thing. All right, so Kendra found a dress style that she likes, but you don't like the color. But it has pockets. Oh, wow. It has pockets and it's so light. Yeah, that's pretty. And look at the sleeves. Yeah. All right, we finally found an ATM. And we got cash. Yeah, so we could buy stuff. I'm so tired. <laughs> that was really great. I mean, we got what we needed, but I'm just really drained. Anytime every single aspect of what you're doing is new to you, I mean, the language is new, the culture is new, the parking is new, the products are new, the money is new, like negotiating. everything yeah. is new. So I just feel really tired. Um, but we had the coolest experience there at the end of our time. We just went to the ATM because we needed to pay in cash for the parking. And we were walking back, you have to go through security again, so Jeremy's taking everything out of his pockets. I was walking ahead of Jeremy and put my bag through security, and a man gets Jeremy's attention and points down, and Jeremy had dropped the cash that we had just gotten out of the ATM. And he just told us about it. And Jeremy just picked it up and thanked him. And I was just really impressed. I've heard so many things about Rwanda being a very safe country, but that made me feel incredibly safe. Yeah, it was over 100,000 francs, which is like 120, $130. That fell out of his and pocket. instead of someone taking it, they let me know and happily helped out. It, yeah. It says a lot. It does. Oh, <laughs> there we yes, go. Yes, I was gonna say this will not work. Yay! Good shot. Hey. Janae's drink. She's got it. In! Yay! Good shot. The sad thing is, it doesn't make the satisfying sweet noise. We'll have to get a nut if we can find one. 
Oh, good try. You were so close. Nice. Good shot. Yes! Good shot. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, you're out, Caleb. Oh, Isaac won. Good night. Do you have south? Today we're hiking Table Mountain. How pretty that is. Right, this was Nelson Mandela's cell.